Hey, what's up guys? Today, I'll show you a vampire horror film, 30 Days of Night, Part 1. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins in the northernmost town of the US, which is in Alaska and is isolated in 80 miles of wilderness. This town is cut off every winter for 30 days of night, and then we see a shady man named Shady watching a ship sailing away in the snowy background. He walks for a bit but doesn't seem to have any destination, as he's in the middle of nowhere. After a while, Shady finally comes across the town and plans something shady. It's the last day of the sun and we see a cop named Evan and its cop partner checking out a pile of burnt cell phones. This is a bit confusing for the cops because there's no motive for doing so, but then they decide to soak in the sunset. Evan is a bit distracted even as his partner talks about how romantic it is to see the sunset with a hormone partner. Now people start to leave the town, so cop partner changes the sign to show the reduced population. Then we learn that Evan has asthma and is getting separated from his wife, Babe, who is also leaving the town. Some huskies start barking at a mysterious person, but they get stabbed by him. After that, Evan finds a man named Beardy trying to fix his car while flexing his smelly beard. Evan writes his beard a citation even though Beardy gets upset. Then, the cops get a call about the huskies that were brutally killed, so they go to check it out. Babe gets into an accident on her way to the airport and has no other choice but to call Evan. However, he resists his hormone urges and sends his partner to cater to her. Now, Evan checks out the bloodbath at the Husky Kill and promises to avenge the fallen good boys, especially after learning the dog owner had no quarrels with anyone. He then goes back to the police station, where Granny tells him about other problems happening in the town. On the other hand, cop partner tries to help Babe reach the airport, but she misses the flight and has to stay back in this town for 30 days. Eben goes to a utility factory, where he meets a couple of residents. They show him the Muffin Monster, which is a shredding machine, and we learn that a helicopter was ripped in half and given to the Muffin Monster. Tensions run high as an old man at the power plant senses something suspicious and heads out to inspect what's going on. However, he finds some zombie vampires who circle around him and eat him up for a one-way trip to meet Jesus. Now, we see Shady troubling the bartender for a drink, so Eben tells him to get out of the bar. Shady tries to act strong, but Babe shows up with a gun to his head. He tries to attack Babe, but Eben dominates him and arrests him. Now, Babe and Eben take Shady to the police station, but he says that something ominous is to come. Shady is put behind bars, and then Babe meets Eben's brother. Elsewhere, some workers plan a triple hormone yoga session, but one of them gets attacked by a zombie vampire. This prompts the unsatisfied girl to run away, leaving the man to deal with the other vampires. Now, Eben questions Shady, but the granny says the computer had shut down. This prompts Shady to claim that they are coming to honor him. Eben wants to know what Shady means by they, but the backup power needs to be started, so he goes to the power plant. He finds the old man's head on a spike, so he panics and alerts everyone to stay locked up in their homes or go to the diner. Meanwhile, the dog owner and his wife are attacked by the vampires, and the wife is dragged away after a brief struggle where the dog owner does his best to save his shitty wife with his shotgun. Now, Shady annoys Eben's brother by saying that death is approaching the town. He throws a piece of plastic at Shady, but he says he can use it to pick the lock to his cell. The man gets tricked, so he goes to get the plastic but Shady grabs him by his chick neck. Luckily, Eben arrives and shoots Shady, after which he cuffs him. Shady says that Eben is a dead man and doesn't answer any questions he asks him. Eben and Babe try to round up the other cops, but they come across a vampire who attacks their car with rage. Eben manages to shoot the vampire, but it's of no use. So Babe shakes him off and drives away. The town is in chaos, and then the granny radios for help in a chicken voice, but it's in vain. Eben and Babe go back to the police station, but find blood everywhere, although Shady is still alive. He is upset that the vampires didn't take him away and ask Eben to shoot him. Babe stops Eben from making this mistake, and then we see the leader of the zombie vampires named Alpha, who instructs his vampires on how to increase their army. The survivors of the onslaught talk about how these vampires are resistant to bullets with their bulletproof muscles, and they need to come up with a plan of action. Afterward, Alpha and his vampires turn other residents into vampires and carry out a brutal attack on the town. There is absolute chaos everywhere, as diabetic blood is spilled and human guts and smelly parts are eaten. The humans try to use their guns and bullets, but it's of no use as they are dominated and subjugated. 
Babe and Eben manage to reach the other survivors, who also include Eben's brother. They figure out that they need to go to the Utiliver factory and decide to lay out some bear traps outside to slow down the vampires. However, they are attacked by Alpha and the vampires, who manage to turn over their car and attack them. Things aren't looking good for them, but Beardy comes to the rescue in his Tesla truck. This allows Babe and Eben to escape with Beardy, while Alpha looks at them with murderous intent. Beardy wants to know what's going on, but Eben and Babe don't have an answer for him. They go back to the survivor shelter, but can't find anyone there. Luckily, everyone is hiding in the attic, so the three join them. They worry about how they're going to defeat the zombie vampires. But Eben says they have an advantage because they know the town and the cold. Meanwhile, Alpha meets Shady and thanks him for all he's done for the vampires. This hints at the fact that Shady might have burnt the cell phones intentionally to prevent communication with the outside world, and he might have also killed the annoying dogs, because they are sled dogs which can be used for transportation. Despite this, Alpha attacks Shady, presumably sending him to meet Jesus as a reward for what he had done. The vampires start running through homes, and it causes the survivors to panic like scared chickens. The only way out is the utilitor factory, where they can last for a month. However, there are arguments and fights erupting due to panic, and Eben has to maintain his calm because the group needs to focus on survival. It's day 7, and we see a smelly girl walking outside, begging for help. The survivors want to help her, but Eben realizes that she's being used as bait to lure them out. Now Alpha and his vampires confront the girl, and she apologizes for not luring out any of the sensitive survivors, possibly because she's not sexy enough, but only smelly. She begs the zombie boss for some zombie mercy. But Alpha curses her, saying that he's not a zombie, but a vampire. A disturbing scene follows as the vampires torture the girl before ending her smelly life. We see Eben outside, trying to get to her. He fails to save the girl, but then he finds the dog owner, who's still at the same place where he lost his wife. While helping the dog owner, Eben realizes that he's turning into a vampire. A brief battle follows, and Eben loses his gun. But he eventually manages to end the dog owner after chopping off his head with an axe. Eben goes back to the survivor camp, but is struggling for breath as he can't find his inhaler. Alpha finds the dog owner's body and gets upset, so he vows revenge. Later, an old survivor wakes up and decides to walk to the safe zone, which is eight miles away. Babe and the survivor's son try to console him, but it's of no use as he tricks them into letting him use the bathroom. The old survivor escapes fast despite being old, so the son goes after him and knocks out Babe when she tries to stop him. The commotion wakes up Eben, and he tends to Babe. But then, an ugly zombie vampire enters the house to flex its bald head. He almost finds Babe and Eben, but gets distracted when he hears the son calling out to his dad. As expected, the bald vampire attacks the son and drags him away, and it is assumed the old survivor did not survive. Babe and Eben go back to the attic and think about the times when they were together. However, their hormone memories are interrupted when some vampires run over their roofs. It begins to snow, so the coast is clear, and the survivors decide to make a supply run. They enter a grocery store and stock up on food and medicine, but they get distracted when they hear some munching noises. They find a vampire girl feasting on her mom and get chased by her. The little girl attacks Eben and the others, but then Eben's brother uses his skinny muscles to chop off her head with an axe. The survivors realize they need to create a distraction and try to come up with a plan to bring out the sun earlier than expected. That's when Babe points out that the granny used UV lights to grow plants at home. So the group can use these lights to create a sun lamp that will weaken the vampires. Babe proves that the vampires are weak against the sun by saying they had to use Shady to do their bidding when the town was still bright and sunny. With no other option, Eben becomes the scapegoat and calls out to the vampires while swinging his axe like a madman. Babe and the others go the other way, but Alpha and his vampires are smart, so they attack her group as well. Now, Eben finds the UV lights and decides to use them as weapons. Alpha and his vampires arrive at the scene, and he sends his vampire girlfriend to attack Eben. Luckily, he uses the UV light to burn her face, and this makes Alpha upset. The vampires cut the UV light's power, so Eben makes a run for his shitty life and radios Babe who's also in hiding. Beardy takes the radio and tells Eben he's going to have a party. Then, we see Alpha sending his vampire girlfriend to meet Satan because she cannot offer him hormone yoga with her burnt face. Now, Beardy starts his party and uses his truck to destroy a lot of vampires. It's an intense sequence that ends with Beardy getting trapped inside a house. He's surrounded by vampires, so he uses some flares to kick off an explosion. 
However, the vampires use the snow to save themselves, and Beardy's head is smashed by Alpha, but luckily not his messy beard. Eben makes his way back to Babe, and she hugs him, ready for some hormone therapy. But then, one of the survivors reveals that he was bitten by the vampire girl earlier, and is about to transform. He starts to be controlled by the vampire urge, so Eben does what needs to be done. It's day 27, and the survivors see a flashlight from a neighboring home. It turns out to be cop partner, so Babe and Eben go to him, thankful that he is still alive. However, they learn that cop partner had shot down his family because he didn't want the vampires to eat them. Eben is upset to hear this, but he takes his partner to the hiding spot. Nobody is there, so the group assumes they've gone to the utilitor factory. On their way, they find a little girl, and Babe saves her, although this is a trap. A vampire arrives, so Eben distracts him and allows Babe to run away and hide. Eben then makes it to the factory and finds the others, but not Babe. Meanwhile, Alpha tells his vampire army that they need to end all human survivors, so that nobody suspects anything about their presence after the sun rises and the remaining residents return. Back at the factory, a vampire attacks Cop Partner and infects him, after which the others try to fight him. The vampire is too strong for the others, and he is about to terminate Eben, but Cop Partner pushes him into the Muffin Monster. However, he is also turning into a vampire, so Eben has to end his life. Babe radios Eben and tells him she's freezing with the girl, so he decides to save her, even though there are vampires everywhere. Eben reassures Babe that he will watch the sunrise with her the next day, and she says she never should have left him. Things get interesting as Alpha and his vampires break into the pipeline and set the town on fire. Basically, this will erase any vampire traces from the town, and people will just think it was a bad accident. Eben can't let Babe burn in flames, so he decides to fight the vampires by becoming one himself. He takes some blood from his partner and injects it into himself so that he can get vampire powers. His brother is against this idea, but Eben becomes a vampire and completes his painful transformation. He goes out to confront Alpha and the other vampires in the middle of the burning snow. Now, Eben challenges Alpha to wrestle their muscles and kicks off an intense fight. After the fast and furious fight, Eben is beaten down by Alpha, so he tells Babe to make a run for it. Things get tough for Eben, but he launches a surprise attack and terminates Alpha with a punch through the face. The other vampires are shocked to see this, so they run away like fat chickens, not bats. Babe and the others finally come out of hiding as the sun rises, but this also means that Eben is going to burn. Regardless, he shares one last moment with Babe and watches the sunrise with her just like he had promised. They share one last tongue massage before Eben burns to the sun. The movie ends with Babe cuddling Eben's dead body. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.